Political heavyweights are on the campaign trail this weekend with just 10 days to go before the midterm elections. Barack Obama, President Biden, and Donald Trump fanning out across the country in the final days of the campaign. Yeah, Obama is on a five-state tour to rally support for Democrats. He campaigned in Georgia on Friday, in Wisconsin and Michigan yesterday, along with uh, incumbent Democrat Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Leaders like Gretchen Whitmer are working to make sure cars are being built and high-tech manufacturing is being done right here in Michigan instead of China. That's an actual plan. Even though he's facing his own re-election campaign, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is on the campaign trail this weekend rallying in support for Lee Zeldin, the congressman who's running for governor of New York. If you are tired of the same old, same old story, well, you have the power to turn the page. You have the power to elect Lee Zeldin as the next governor of the state of New York. You will roll with some changes, and this will be the 21st century version of the shot heard round the world. Let's get it done. Meantime, in Wisconsin, President Obama slammed incumbent GOP Senator Ron Johnson for calling Social Security a Ponzi scheme. Obama is hoping to get Democrats fired up as they head to the polls. Let's get more on his Midwest campaign swing from CNN correspondent Omar Jimenez. Well, President Obama said the reason he was here in Milwaukee is simple, to get people to vote. We are closing in on a week to Election Day, and this was the second stop the former president made over the course of Saturday, the first being in Detroit campaigning for Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Then he made his way here to Milwaukee, where he campaigned largely for Democratic Governor Tony Evers and Senate hopeful Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes. Part of what he emphasized emphasized was that democracy was on the ballot in this particular race coming up. He said in familiar fashion of Republicans, no one can hear you outside this auditorium when you boo, so you have to go vote. He also, though, touched on Senator Ron Johnson floating the idea that Social Security would become discretionary funding or decided on an annual basis. Take a listen. Senator Johnson voted to raise the retirement age to 70, support, act, supported a plan that would put Social Security and Medicare on the chopping block every single year. You'd, each year, you'd have to vote to renew this thing. I, I, I mean, think about it, because Washington works so well. That's, you want your Social Security and Medicare reliant on Congress every year. He's called Social Security a Ponzi scheme said that, that it's candy that the left is giving away. I, I, the, 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 the point is, some of you here are on Social Security. Some of your parents are on Social Security. Some of your grandparents are on Social Security. You know why they have Social Security? Because they worked for it. They worked hard jobs for it. They have chapped hands for it. They had long hours and sore backs and bad knees to get that Social Security. And if Ron Johnson does not understand that, if he understands giving tax breaks for private planes more than he understands making sure that seniors who've worked all their lives are able to retire with dignity and respect, He's not the person who's thinking about you and knows you and sees you, and he should not be your senator from Wisconsin. Now, Boris and Amra, the former president, has really jumped into these midterm races strongly in the past week and a half, not just with his planned in-person visits, but also he's recorded nearly two dozen commercials for Democratic candidates, but also campaign committees. In this particular race, the Senate race here in Wisconsin, Democratic candidate Mandela Barnes and incumbent Republican Senator Ron Johnson, polls have shown there is no clear leader in this race. It's that 
close, but both of them have campaigned on the country being on the line, partly because whoever wins that race will help control the entire U.S. Senate. Over October, Barnes has outraised Johnson just about three to one over the course of, again, October to this point, and Barnes is hoping that Obama's visit can help keep that momentum going. Of course, Emma. Omar, thank you. The Republican candidate in the race for New York governor gets a boost from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis rallied supporters of Lee Zeldin during a campaign stop in New York. A poll show that New York governor's race is tightening. Uh, Kathy Hochul, the incumbent, had a big lead in the summer, but it has become a very contentious race as crime becomes a major focus of the campaign. We get details now from CNN's Gloria Pasmina. Boris Amara, Lee Zelding relying on some big Republican heavy hitters. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a potential presidential contender in 2024, coming all the way out to Long Island to stump alongside Lee Zelding, who has been mounting a, a, a pretty significant challenge to the incumbent, Governor Kathy Hochul. That race has become uncomfortably close for Democrats in the last couple of weeks. According to some polls, Lee Zeldin is just within single digits of Governor Hochul's lead, and that has Democrats very, very worried. Now, we have seen a lot of enthusiasm uh, and concern here on Long Island, and mainly around the issue of public safety, and that has been a key part of the Zeldin campaign. Now, Governor Kathy Hochul, for her part, spent the day in Erie County. That's very much her backyard. She cast her early vote in Buffalo and was asked about what she thought about Ron DeSantis coming all the way out to New York to campaign with Zeldin. He can come here, he can stand here, but he will not change the core and the essence of who New Yorkers are. And I feel very confident that Democrats will turn out. When Democrats turn out, we will win. Now you hear Governor Hochul talking about turnout there, and that is actually going to be key should she be able to win this race. New York has not elected a Republican governor in 20 years, but when it comes to turnout, that's what she's going to need most. She's going to need Democrats to go out to the polls. They outnumber Republicans here in the state, but it's really going to come down to enthusiasm and people being able to, people being willing to go out there and vote for her. I spoke to a voter earlier who told me that she just wasn't that familiar with Kathy Hochul because she'd only been in office for just 14 months. So uh, that is certainly one of the challenges that the incumbent governor seems to be facing. But in the last couple of weeks, she has been drumming up support and uh, trying to convince voters that uh, she can pull this off. Amra, Boris. Gloria Pasmino, thank you so much. Let's dig deeper on some of these midterm races. Joining us now to share his insights, political White House reporter Daniel Littman. Good morning, Daniel. Great to see you bright and early on a Sunday. Uh, we're only nine too. days out. Yeah, we're only nine days out from Election Day. What stands out to you in the polling data uh, across the country about what we might see on Election Night? I think what stands out is that Democrats wish that this election was held in August when they had uh, the headwinds at their back. Uh, they had accomplished a lot in terms of the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, they had the infrastructure bill. They had the burn pits uh, bill. Uh, and now uh, Republicans and Democrats and independents, they're finally uh, making up their minds. They're paying attention to these races. Uh, and the issue of abortion, which really had helped Democrats months ago, is just much less important. Most people are more affected by gas prices, by inflation. Um, as you know, inflation keeps setting these records, it doesn't seem like the Fed has uh, made a huge difference. Uh, and so people are blaming the incumbent uh, in terms of Joe Biden, even though he's not on the ballot, uh, his Democrats are, and they're saying, uh, why is my life not getting better right now? Yeah, and as history has shown us, the, the president in power, his party during a midterm election, usually suffers losses. The question is, how dramatic are they going to be? I, I want to ask you specifically about um, two Republican candidates for governor. Ron DeSantis, as Gloria reported, in New York campaigning for Lee Zeldin. Uh, Arizona Republican Carrie Lake, she hasn't even won her race for governor yet, but she's cutting ads for Republicans across the country. What does that tell you about their standing within the GOP? Well, it tells me that they're rising stars, and even though they have have their own competitive races, 
uh, it's not sure things uh, that they would win, but they're very likely to win, that they are trying to increase their national profile, that they are very high in demand uh, from Republicans across the country. There was you know, thousands of people at that rally uh, for uh, Ron DeSantis uh, and Lee Zeldin, and so they want to be kind of racking up the favors from uh, other people uh, around the uh, country. And so, I, you know, these are rock stars in the Republican Party uh, and they're heavily in demand. Uh, and so uh, I think that, you know, you don't see Trump rallying out for Lee Zeldin because he isn't very popular in New York.